Hi, John Sarton here with the Rio Grande Jewelry Tech Team. Today I'm here to talk to you about the L80. We're going to talk a little bit about troubleshooting and a little bit about maintenance. Okay, there's not a lot that can go wrong with a machine. Uh, I'm just going to go and show you a, uh, a couple of troubleshooting tips. Um, and uh, and one of them is going to be a, uh, either a blockage in the line or the check valve. So I'm going to extinguish my flame. I'm going to pull the tip off. And then if you look right here at the gauge, um, you know, this is, a, this is a meter that's showing you liters per hour that you're producing. And that is going to correspond with your power setting. Um, I'm going to take and I'm going to put my thumb over the end of this just to create a back pressure. And as we sit here and watch the gauge, um, after it reaches a certain amount of back pressure in the machine, it's going to, it's going to drop down to zero. Uh, the reason for this is they don't want too much back pressure in the machine and there is actually a safety valve that will, uh, that will release uh, the pressure. It will actually stop production. Um, this is a good indication of right there. You just saw how it drops all the way to zero. So that's a really good indication that you either have a blocked hose or you could have possibly have a, a stuck check valve. Um, the, and I'm going to show you about the check valve here in a minute, uh, where that is. Um, and we're going to kind of talk about that. But if you have a, uh, a stuck check valve, um, you're going to remove the check valve. You're going to put it into hot water. Um, just hot tap water will be fine. Let it set for a few minutes, um, dry it off, put it back in the machine, and you should have clear flow. Uh, so always, if, if, if you notice that, if you turn the machine on and it's either not producing gas or it, uh, it will produce for a little bit, you'll see it on the gauge, and then it drops down, then that's definitely an indication of a stuck check valve. I've also seen when the gauge will go up and it'll drop back to zero, it'll go back up. Um, that is another indication that the check valve is sticking. It's not completely closed, but um, the check valve needs to be pulled out and, and cleaned. Uh, so so that, is, uh, that is one indication of uh, of the uh, of a stuck check valve or some blockage in the lines. The other thing is is if you've got a really weak flame, um, I'm not going to be able to show you that here uh, because typically a weak flame, if you have uh, if you've been running the machine, it's been doing great, and then uh, and then all of a sudden you turn it on one day and you're getting good pressure here, but you've got kind of a weak flame. Chances are the electrolyte has been, uh, has been actually contaminated. And one thing you need to remember about this, most important thing, is anytime that you're going to top off your electrolyte solutions or um, actually top off your flux container, uh, you need to follow proper steps. Uh, one of them is to turn off the machine and uh, and let it set for an hour is what is kind of recommended. Um, this is always something good to do at night. Once you're done soldering, uh, you can actually shut the machine off, let it go overnight, and uh, and then you can top off your fluids. Remember, uh, when you need to top off your fluids, the machine is going to indicate that by this um, light will come on. It's a yellow or an amber colored light. It's going to tell you that you're at your minimum, so you need to top it off with distilled water. With the flux, you're going to see a color change in the flame itself. Um, if you are below minimum, the flame is going to be very, very light green. You see this is a, is a, is a bright green. That's why the flux is actually used, is it actually colors the flame because hydrogen burns completely clear. So if there is not enough flux in there, then you're going to see a diminished flame here. We're going to go ahead and let this set for, for a little while, about an hour, and then we're going to come back to it and um, we're going to go through the process 
uh, and we're also going to go through a process of, uh, of changing out the uh, monthly maintenance kit. Um, so we're going to let this set for a little while and, uh, and we'll, we'll be coming back. Okay, so uh, the machine has been resting now for about an hour. Um, the pressure is, is decreased um, so that then I can go ahead and uh, open up, the, uh, up the, the flux chamber and also uh, I can open up the, uh, the pressure cap on the electrolyte solution. So this is, this is actually the uh, process that you want to do every time that you are replacing fluids um, or even topping off fluids. Uh, first thing you want to do, uh, let the machine rest. Then you're going to unscrew your booster tank from the machine. It's really important to follow this exact sequence. If you don't, um, if you open up the, the pressure cap before you remove the booster tank, there is still a vacuum pressure in the machine. And what that vacuum pressure can actually do is it can actually suck um, flux back into your electrolyte solution and that will effectively contaminate your ele electrolyte solution and then you're going to start getting really weak flames. Um, so that is, uh, that is another uh, indication that, uh, that possibly you have uh, a contaminated solution is weak flames. Also, your solution uh, is going to be changed out yearly, so if your solution has been in the machine for two years, and you have not replaced your electrolyte solution, then you're not going to get the same flame quality that you that you used to. Okay, so we've uh, we've got the uh, we've got the flux tank off, and uh, and I can go ahead and I can open up the pressure cap. Now there might be just a little bit of pressure still left in the machine, so you might get a little bit of a airflow. The safety cap is designed to release uh, any pressure prior to it coming completely off the threads. So I'll just slowly back that off, and now there is no pressure in the machine, um, and the safety cap can be removed. At this time, you can top off your solutions, go back into soldering. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go over uh, maintenance with you. So the uh, the Basically, the daily maintenance is actually uh, topping off your fluids. The other thing is, is the machine needs to run 10 minutes a week. Um, if you don't run it for 10 minutes a week, you're going to look at uh, possibly having a stuck check valve whenever you come back to it in a, in, in a couple weeks. So if you have uh, had your machine setting for a while, it hasn't been running, um, you come up to it, you fire it up, um, you are getting that indication of no pressure, um, then it's, it's most likely it's going to be a stuck check valve. Um, and, uh, and I'll show you how to remove the check valve here in just a, just a little bit. So, uh, so what we need for the maintenance is we're going to need some tools. And down here we've got some tools. Uh, you need a pair of flat nose pliers. You need a large bladed screwdriver. I'll show you what that's for here in a bit. You're going to need an adjustable wrench and also a probe. Okay, so these are the four tools that you're going to need. Um, and you're also going to need a maintenance kit. I'm going to set the maintenance kit out and uh, we'll go over the maintenance kit before. Okay, so we're, uh, we're going to go ahead and perform the maintenance on the machine. Um, uh, wear the required personal protective equipment that you can find in the SDS sheets whenever you're doing this. Uh, also have a little bit of, uh, of vinegar on the side uh, just so that you can clean up any spills that you might have from the electrolyte solution. Um, so let's go ahead and cover uh, what comes in the yearly maintenance kit. So in the yearly maintenance kit, uh, we have uh, two replacement hoses. There's a large uh, O-ring here. Now this O-ring is actually for a five-year maintenance. Uh, you are not going to be replacing this O-ring every year. Um, so we're going to set that out of the way. Uh, we have some other assorted gaskets here that I will show you where these go uh, as we go through the, uh, through the maintenance on here. And uh, it has a flashback arrester and also a check valve. This is, uh, this is the yearly maintenance kit. Uh, along with this, you're going to be replacing your electrolyte solutions every year. 
So the initial uh, 360 grams of, uh, of KOH that you mixed up to get the machine running uh, is only good for one year. So every year you're going to have to replace the solutions. When you do replace the solutions, you will have to uh, pour the solutions out of the machine. It's going to come out. It's going to have some some gunk in it. It's going to look kind of kind of nasty, but that is okay. That is that is part of the part of the process with this machine. So uh, don't get uh, don't get freaked out whenever you see some black stuff coming out. Um, you'll rinse uh, rinse the tank a few more times uh, with some fresh water, and then go back in with your mixed up solution after you've mixed up your solution. With that electrolyte solution, um, the spent electrolyte solution, you need to contact your local hazardous waste and see uh, what they require as far as disposal on those. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and start uh, going through this machine and going through the maintenance. So we've got our flux tank off. Um, this right here is actually a seal that seals the flux tank to the machine. So if you pull up and kind of twist on this, you'll find your flux, flux tank seal. Okay. The other seal that's on this is an O-ring. So one of these O-rings that comes in the kit will get replaced here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble that. Um, the, uh, the flat seal that you see here actually goes in the top of the safety cap. So this is, this has recently went through a, a maintenance. Um, so I'm not going, I'm not going to destroy these, uh, to get them out. Um, but, uh, you will need your probe to actually reach in there, pull that out, uh, and then replace it with. Uh, the new flat uh, gasket. Okay, and now let's go ahead and get into the check valve and the flashback arrester. So this cylinder right here, or, or this chamber right here, is actually going to house your flashback arrester. You're going to need to use a adjustable wrench and go ahead and take this cap off. Okay, so um, we got the cap off, and right here is another uh, one of the O-rings that you're gonna have to replace, and that comes in the kit. Also, if you look back in here, you're going to see a flat uh, washer here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out. It's easy to come out. And that is gonna expose your uh, flash back arrester. Um, so this is a flashback arrester. Um, there is another gasket that is way deep in the machine that you're going to have to get in and you're going to have to remove with your probe. It's an O-ring um, and it's actually the smallest O-ring that comes in the kit. So always remember to replace that O-ring whenever you're replacing your flashback arrester. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that back in. Now, the next cap is where you're going to find your check valve. And with this, you also have an O-ring that you need to replace. Okay, so the check valve has actually, there is a, there's like a, a flat nut, or yeah, a flat nut with a, with a hole in it. I'm not exactly sure what to call it. Um, and that's what you need this large flat screwdriver for. Um, it goes in and you screw out this flat nut. Okay. Now on your machine, most likely this is going to be bra uh, brass colored. Um, so uh, look for a brass colored nut instead. You're going to reach back here and you're going to grab a hold of 
your check valve and you're going to pull it out. So this is your check valve. Right on the end of your check valve is a, a uh, O-ring. So make sure that uh, whenever you go back in with a new check valve that your check valve has that O-ring in place. Now whenever I was talking about um, the check valve getting stuck, um, this is when you would go ahead and pull your check valve out in this manner, soak it in hot water, and then go ahead and replace it in the machine. You can also reach in and you can depress the plunger. And you can see that plunger moving back and forth and it's moving freely. Um, that's another way of, of checking uh, to see if your check valve is, is actually moving freely. Okay, let's go ahead and put that back in. I'm going to put the flat nut back in. It's a little bit tricky sometimes to get started. So if you have a problem um, getting it started uh, threading, what you can do is actually you can go backwards. Um, you can go counterclockwise to begin with. You'll actually feel your threads drop in uh, and then go ahead and turn it clockwise. Now, one thing about the check valve that I need to show you, I'm just going to go ahead and put that in and grab this one, is there is another screw head on this check valve. Never turn that screw head. These check valves are actually adjusted for the machine before they leave the, the factory. Um, and if you turn that screw head, then it's going to go out of adjustment. Uh, a lot of indications that someone might have done that is uh, if you know that your solution is not contaminated and you're getting a very weak flame. Um, that is a, that's a definite indication that, uh, that maybe somebody has, has turned this, this screw in the check valve. So never use a screwdriver to turn that, that screw. Okay, we'll go ahead and button this thing back up. And the last thing that you're going to do is you're going to make sure that everything works. So go ahead and tighten these up. Now you don't want to get too carried away on this because if you tighten it too tight, you're going to crush those O-rings and then you're going to have to replace the O-rings. Go ahead and tighten the safety cap. Make sure that we have flux in the booster tank and We'll attach the booster tank. Now the only thing left to do is actually turn the machine on, let it run for a few minutes, and make sure that everything is in operation. So I will uh, let this run for about five minutes and be back. Okay, so the machine's been running about five minutes. Um, I can actually physically feel that there's airflow out of the tip. I'm going to go ahead and light it. And now I know that the machine is working like normal. And that is how you perform a yearly maintenance on the machine. I hope that everything that I've went over here today has been helpful for you. Um, we've talked about maintenance. We've talked about some troubleshooting. So if you have any questions about this machine or about anything, give us a call. The tech team's here to help.